welcome to this course on engineering thermodynamics. Uh, to begin with, I would like all of you to be sure that you have with you the following. These are already passed on to the centers through Moodle or the coordinators have been asked to procure them. The first thing is schedule. Each one of you should have a copy of this schedule with you. And although this is a tentative schedule, I have said tentative schedule because this is this program is a very interactive program. In the schedule, you will generally notice the following. Except for the first day when there are no formal interactions scheduled. On all other days and of course, with a slight difference on the last day, the afternoon sessions are devoted to exercises and discussions and the morning sessions are essentially devoted to the lectures and the main subject matter. Okay. I have tried it out this way because this time we have a large number of centers and hence I thought that I should partition the lecturing part and the discussions part properly. So, this is what I expect to happen. Of course, the slots provided for various topics are tentative slots. It is possible that something may spill over into the next uh, slot. For example, this may get spilled over here. If a small part gets spilled over, I will start the post lunch session with that part, finish it and then we will go to exercises and discussions. Okay. So, this is a schedule which we are going to follow. The second one is a document, you may have either a paper or an electronic version of it, which I call the sequence of topics, this one. And in this you will find uh, again tentative, this is more of a checklist than anything else. For everything here, item 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, we have an expanded version of subtopics, expanded version with subtopics. So, there are in all 16 topics and you will find them all listed here and the details listed in this document. So, this acts as a checklist for me, for us and also for you. The third item which you should have with you, if not immediately soon and if not the whole of it at one go at least part by part is the set of exercises. I should say recommended set of exercises. Okay. Uh, these are the set of exercises we have built up over the years for undergraduate and early part of postgraduate mechanical engineering thermodynamics. And many of these will be discussed and assigned to you during the course of this program. Since a course in mechanical engineering thermodynamics will not be complete without working with steam, just to uh, be on a common ground, we have decided to use a particular steam table, nothing special about it, just for convenience we have used this steam table and sooner or later you should have a copy of this with you. This is not really exhaustive, but good enough for a first course in thermodynamics. We will discuss this in detail, of course there are much more detailed steam tables available and we will talk about them and even refer to them if need be. A good version of that, a nice version of that is available on the net. I will provide a link at the appropriate time and those who are interested can download it for yourself. Now, that brings me back to the main theme and before we go to introductory topics, The question is, what is 
this workshop about. A precursor to this workshop was held uh, a year and a half ago. It was called Thermodynamics in Mechanical Engineering and uh, the coordinators workshop was scheduled in February 2011. The main workshop was conducted I think in June 2011. Okay. There were only 31 centers and uh, less than a thousand uh, participants in the final workshop. Uh, we received excellent feedback and when the project was extended phase 2, Professor Fatak uh, sort of I should not say requested, uh, pressurized me to start off because the way this is implemented there are no lab sessions, but there are a large number of exercise and discussion sessions. So, this can be whole thing managed at short notice at a reasonably large number of centers. So, this time we have uh, 167 centers. We started off with 168, but one had to be deleted for uh, lack of participants. So, we have 167. And one of the major tasks for me and for my colleagues is going to be to be able to interact. Uh, as impartially as possible with those 167 centers. Uh, we will set up some mechanism by which I will see to it that I do not visit the same center unnecessarily uh, a large number of times and uh, spread the discussion time as uniformly as possible. Okay. Now, although this is a course in engineering thermodynamics, This is not just a simple lecture program in engineering thermodynamics. This is a course for teachers. So, rather than lectures and tutorials, this is going to be more of lecture, demonstration, illustrations, discussion. At the end of this, I want all of you to appreciate how a proper course in engineering thermodynamics can be taught. This is going to be an illustration of that. And it is assumed that all of you have some background in engineering thermodynamics. My experience in engineering thermodynamics is going to be, uh, has been over almost 30 years at IIT Bombay. And the whole idea but the germination of this course without I knowing it started about 10 years ago. In 2001, I was called for a one day workshop on engineering education in the 21st century and I just provided an illustration on teaching of uh, engineering sciences and my forte being thermodynamics took some illustrations from the topic of thermodynamics. It was in Pune and the participants hounded me about my ideas. And I realized at that time that the way engineering thermodynamics is learnt and taught in many, many engineering colleges is not what I would like it to be. And from that time I started thinking about how to teach engineering thermodynamics in a proper way. And, uh, came up with a structure based on the work of so many people, those who have written books in thermodynamics, those who have developed thermodynamics, uh, my teachers who have taught me thermodynamics. Okay. And when uh, Professor Fatak's NMI, NMEI city program or the so called Ekalavya mission started, uh, after a first few courses in computers and electronics, he wanted to uh, have courses from other branches and I became the first, uh, well, guinea pig. I am no more a guinea pig. I do this willingly now and I am happy to be here with you for the second rendition of this 
course in thermodynamics. Since all of you are uh, familiar with teaching of thermodynamics, I think uh, let us now go to the first topic or first item. The first subtopic in this is going to be textbooks. I find that from the point of view of engineering thermodynamics, particularly mechanical engineering thermodynamics, there is no perfect textbook. So, get rid of the idea that there is a perfect textbook. If you follow it, assimilate it and teach it from that, everything will be perfect that is just not true. Although there are a large number of very good books, uh, the fact remains that there is no perfect book. Each one of you will have your own favorite and there is nothing wrong in that. In the exercises bunch of paper, just behind the title page, I have a list of texts and references. You will find that I have listed 5 and this is by no means an exhaustive list. Let me say that these 5 are my favorites. We have the first book, I think I have listed them in alphabetical order because I do not want to give an impression of any favoritism or of 1 out of 5, 2 out of 5. So, the books are one by Achyutan, second one by Moran and Shapiro, third one by Sears and Salinger, the fourth one by Sontag, Borgnak and Van Weilen, the fifth one by Zimanski. And of course, the our steam tables are also listed. Let me come to these five books. These books are from authors with a variety of background. That these two books, one by Sears and Salinger and another by Zimanski, are uh, from the physics point of view. Okay. And we will learn a lot of basic physics related to thermodynamics from either of these books, Sears, Salinger as well as Zimanski. Each one is good in its own right. Notice that I have recommended the fourth edition of Zimanski's book published more than 50 years ago. That is because the later editions of this are perhaps too physics oriented and are not really of much use to us. Okay. Whereas, uh, I think the subtitle of this book is Heat and Thermodynamics, a textbook for students of science and engineering. That subtitles for some reason got deleted from the later editions, perhaps rightfully so. The book by Sears and Salinger was earlier only by Sears and although it is an oldish book, it is one of those books which provides a reasonably complete statement at the introductory level and from physics point of view of thermodynamics, kinetic theory and statistical thermodynamics. Otherwise, the thermodynamics part is perhaps equally good in both Sears and Salinger as well as in Zimanski. These three books, one by Achyutan, one by Moran and Shapiro and one by Sontag, Borgnak and Van Weilen, these are textbooks written from uh, the point of view of engineers, particularly mechanical engineers. Uh, in particular, the Moran and Shapiro book is perhaps the most neat and most exhaustive, although it may not be very student friendly. Uh, this one is an Indian book, Professor Achyutan was a professor at IIT Bombay. A part of my thermodynamics I learned from him. And you will find that much of the treatment in Professor Achyutan book is somewhat similar to what we are going to follow here. Of course, as I have said, this is not an exhaustive list. And the reason some other books are not listed here is perhaps uh, I have not been able to spend some time with those books. Uh, in the coordinators workshop, I was reminded that there is a book by 
I think Sengel or Sengel and Bowles. Uh, I have seen that book, but I have not been uh, able to you know even browse through it in any detail and that is why I will not uh, make any comments about it. If I get time, I will go through that and I am sure because it is a popular book, I am told it is a very student friendly book. So, from that point of view, maybe I should also list it here. If I have not done that, that is because of uh, lack of exposure of myself uh, to that book. Now, we are teachers, we teach uh, various subjects to our students and of course, one of the things which we have to do is evaluate. So, the next thing is evaluation. Now, in many places, the colleges are affiliated to the university and you do not have much of a choice on the scheme of evaluation. But when it comes to thermodynamics, since there are a large number of small, small pieces of information to be absorbed by the student. Uh, it would be better if the evaluation is done in as continuous a fashion as possible. Professor Fatak mentioned clickers and it would have been very good if all of you were to have an access to a clicker. So, that at the end of uh, every sub topic or sub sub topic, I could create a question or two, ask you to press the appropriate buttons and immediately like uh, KBC, I would get a feedback here within a matter of seconds or minutes. So, this should be preferably continuous, but not really mathematically continuous because we have only some 3 or 4 contact hours a week. But I would prefer that if possible, if you have a small class, conduct a small quiz based on what has been taught in that week at the end of the week or at the beginning of next week. The students are kept on their toes, they will learn what is to be learned in that week, in that week itself. They will not postpone it till the big exam which is mid semester or semester end. And the teacher will also get an immediate feedback. Okay. Uh, my personal uh, evaluation scheme which I find you know, easy to implement and very good in the IIT Bombay type of environment is one end semester examination and a large number of quizzes. How many quizzes I can conduct depends on the lecture schedule and the number of holidays which we have. Uh, I try to attempt 6 quizzes. Generally, I am successful in 6. If pressed for time, 6 become 5. But this uh, previous semester, uh, I was able, I was lucky I could conduct 7 and I was very happy. And maybe my students were also happy. I will introduce to my students later during this course. Now, although we teach thermodynamics, thermodynamics is usually taught uh, depending on the scheme of the complete course, either in the second year first semester, second year second semester at a few places and in many places it is even taught in the first year, part of it in first year and the remaining part in second year. I generally find it a good idea to keep the or to bring the course of thermodynamics in perspective by telling the students what is engineering, what is mechanical engineering and what is the place of thermodynamics in mechanical engineering. So, the question is what is engineering? This is necessary because many students end up in a course on engineering without knowing what engineering is about. Forget. Uh, without realizing whether they have the aptitude for that particular branch of endeavor or not. I will not spend much time on it. I would simply say and this is how one can nicely explain. On one side we have nature and on the other side we have us that is humans. And perhaps an engineer or engineering is that effort of course, executed by an engineer which uses natural resources of any kind to provide us with a good quality of life. This is generally the scheme of engineering. 
and it is a very general scheme and by this scheme you will notice that even people like tailors, cooks, cobblers, all of them are engineers and nothing wrong in calling them engineers. Now, what is mechanical engineer? In this scheme of thing, where does mechanical engineering come in? So, the general scheme of thing is going to be the same thing, nature at one end and us at the other end. Mechanical engineering as all of us know and as our teachers have told us is about machines. What type of machines? Various types of machines, some types of machines which use natural resources say of the fuel type or sunlight type to produce power energy. And what is this power used for? Well, this power part of it is used to drive machines which in turn are used to provide us good life like air conditioners, pencils, pens, cars, aircraft, mobile phones, what you have. There are machines which produce machines. Okay. And there are many other types of machines. you can imagine and put things here. Okay. So, essentially mechanical engineering is about machines which convert natural resources into power which can directly be or indirectly be used to provide us a good life either by driving machines or producing machines or producing many other gadgets which you may or may not call machines which provide us a good quality of life. So, I think this is one way we could explain to our students what mechanical engineering is all about. Now, in this notice that there is one stream where we have natural resources being converted to power. If you look at the history natural resources of the fuel kind like coal, oil, gas, wood, flowing water, flowing wind, water at a height. These are all natural resources which have been used by engineers using various types of machines to produce power. And if it is a fuel, usually the fuel is burnt and so called thermal energy is created. And that part of mechanical engineering which considers this that is we have either a fuel of some kind being used to produce power. This is the scheme of thermal engineering. Not only that sometimes power is used to create some good effect. like pump water or cool things, create ice etcetera. Well, all these machines are machines in which thermal engineering is involved. And usually the fuel is burnt and what we have is a intermediate entity called heat. And hence we have the old terminology heat power engineering and synonym more or less for thermal engineering or heat and power engineering. And then we have hydraulic engineering, refrigeration engineering and all that. But the idea at the heart of this is conversion 
of energy in some form, particularly the heat form and the work form. The science which looks at this is thermodynamics. So, this is our historical definition of thermodynamics that is the science which looks at the implementation technology application of interconversion of energy in various forms, particularly from the so called heat form to the work form and so on. So, this is at the heart of thermal engineering and hence it is at the heart of a significant part of mechanical engineering, which in turn is one of the major chunks of engineering. Remember that thermodynamics has come out of science, but thermodynamics also has come out of technology. Okay. Boilers were built, water was boiled and water mills and windmills were set up and used even before people understood uh, what the science of thermodynamics was. In fact, much of science and technology has developed in the other way. We did something, it worked, then people with a scientific background started looking at it, came up with the governing ideas, the basic ideas of this and the science developed. Okay. And because science is involved and technology or engineering is also involved, thermodynamics is a science what is known, we call it and engineering science like mechanics, fluid mechanics, material science. Well, scientists would say it is part of science and engineers and technologists would say, well, we depend on it, we make significant use of it and hence it is as much part of an engineering and such things are known as engineering science. Now, a student also learns various other courses and it is necessary for us to talk about which are the precursors for following subjects. See finally, a student is enrolled for mechanical engineering and for becoming a proper mechanical engineer, he has to learn various subjects. Uh, teams of uh, professors have already sat down in meetings of uh, some committees, boards of studies and all that and have come up with a sequence of courses okay, according to their own wisdom. Thermodynamics is somewhere in the middle, but you cannot learn thermodynamics unless you have learned something which is required to learn before you learn thermodynamics. This is known as prerequisites. Prerequisites are typically of two kinds. One, subject matter which you should learn before you can learn and appreciate thermodynamics. And second, uh, tools from other branches of science, particularly mathematics, which are required to appreciate and study and solve exercises in thermodynamics. So, the prerequisites are essentially physics and chemistry. Well, high school level is good enough to begin a study of engineering thermodynamics. Mathematics well, we need all the math that we have done to the high school level plus we need calculus if it is not included, but in particular we need properties of the 
differentials. In particular, what is meant by an exact differential? Otherwise, we do not need, we do not really need the ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, but we need differentiation. We need simple integration, we need partial differentiation. But multidimensional integration and all that, that is not really needed. So, these are the prerequisites of thermodynamics and if you are good in this, there is no reason why one should not be able to appreciate and understand thermodynamics. Now, if there are prerequisites in the mechanical engineering scheme of things, what follows thermodynamics? Actually, if you look at mechanical engineering, uh, we look at three types of things. First, something to do with energy and power, something by which we design the basic structure of various machines and the third one is how do you produce or manufacture all those machines. When it comes to engineering power, we call this thermal and fluids engineering quite often. And in this, perhaps the first subject to study is thermodynamics. It is followed by or sometimes simultaneously is learnt with another subject of equal importance called fluid mechanics. And then a third subject which follows is heat transfer. These are the three basic subjects on which thermal and fluids engineering part of mechanical engineering is based. And after that, well you have all subjects pertaining to applications. Of course, you take uh, input from combustion, psychrometry, chemistry and all that. Applications to engines, applications to heat exchangers of various kinds, applications to refrigerators and their derivatives like air conditioners and cryo refrigerators of various kinds. Those who are not really in thermal and fluids engineering, but are into design and production, you should be able to list out a similar set of courses in your field, because such a stream of courses is not just the requisite of energy and power. Any other branch of uh, engineering or sub branch of mechanical engineering will have a similar set of engineering science subjects. For example, engineering mechanics, solid mechanics, kinetics and dynamics and so on for design and material science, elasticity and plasticity and so on for production engineering. Now, you will notice that thermodynamics is at its heart a basic part of physics. And hence, thermodynamics can not be learnt unless we appreciate and understand at least something about other branches of physics. For example, thermodynamics works pretty well with mechanics and many aspects from mechanics, geometry, electricity, magnetism. And even from various parts of chemistry, particularly physical chemistry, properties of liquid, gases, all that, we all have to work together with thermodynamics. And because of all these things together, when it comes to 
contributions to thermodynamics. You will find that all kinds of scientists and engineers have contributed to the science of thermodynamics over the ages. For example, physicists have contributed. chemists have contributed, engineers have contributed. Among physicists, we have Joule, Kelvin, Boltzmann, many, many, chemists, Gibbs, Helmholtz and all that. Engineers, well many of these people we do not know whether they are physicists or engineers. Watt, oh how can I forget, Carnot, the oldest of the lot, okay. Rumford, that can always argue whether he was an engineer or a physicist. Keenan, a large number. Okay. I am sure the list is not exhaustive. If you ask me tomorrow, I will add a few more names and maybe drop a few names here. But what is important is that once something becomes a proper science, mathematicians look at it. And they try to put the whole structure in a proper mathematical form logical mathematical formulation. And here two names are important, one is Carey Theodori and another is Giles. We will not discuss the work of Giles in any detail, but the work of Carey Theodori we will come and refer to again and again particularly our first law of thermodynamics would essentially be based on the formulation given by Carey Theodori. Now, an introductory part of thermodynamics is not complete without discussing what is the definition of thermodynamics. I put a question mark, actually a double question mark on definition, because soon we will notice that we would not like to define something by using something which is yet to be defined. Okay. And uh, the definition of thermodynamics is very difficult to come by without using terms which we have not yet defined. So, if you look up any definition of thermodynamics, you will say that thermodynamics is a science which relates to energy, but particularly transfer or transaction of energy between different systems. There are a large number of terms here, you know energy itself, transfer or transport, different systems. And then we say that thermodynamics in particular classifies this into the work type of transfer and the heat type of transfer. So, exchange of heat and work or conversion of heat to work and work to heat is all 
the subject matter of thermodynamics. Okay. But we have not yet defined what is heat, what is work and all that. And now there are you know scary words which we are going to properly define in thermodynamics. For example, we are going to define something which is energy, we are going to define or redefine what is meant by work, we are going to define what is meant by heat, we are going to define what is meant by temperature and other esoteric terms like entropy. So, this whole is the domain of thermodynamics, but particularly we could say that thermodynamics is the science which considers the energy interactions or energy transfer between different systems and particularly of the work and heat kinds. Okay. And for that we will define all these terms and we will be well on our way to a study of thermodynamics. Now, this is absolutely the background material and now at this stage we can say that well the introductory topics are over 